Synthesis of ethers. There are three different ways to synthesize ether, and the most famous method to synthesize ether is through Williamson ether synthesis. And the second method is acid catalyzed dehydration of alcohols. And the third method is by the acid catalyzed addition of alcohols to alkenes. Okay, let's go look into the Williamson's ether synthesis. Williamson's ether synthesis was discovered by Alexander Williamson in uh, 1850, and it involves a nucleophilic displacement of a halide ion or another leaving group by an alkoxide ion. So the actual synthesis goes like this, where the alkoxide ion is going to make an SN2 reaction on an alkyl halide and thrust the leaving group out, thereby forming the ether that we want. Okay, so here in this case, this is a symmetrical ether since the two R groups are one and the same. Okay, now the very first step here is the synthesis of an alkoxide ion. How are we going to synthesize the required alkoxide ion for the synthesis of ether? Now for the preparation of alkoxide, you're going to take a corresponding alcohol and then react it with sodium hydride, which is going to act as a base, abstracting the hydrogen from the alcohol. So this is going to go abstract the hydrogen and the bond between the oxygen and hydrogen is going to break and it's going to move towards oxygen thereby forming the alkoxide ion okay and once the alkoxide ion is formed it's going to react with our alkyl halide thereby forming the ether that we want let's take a look into the very first uh, way to synthesize ether which is williamson's ether synthesis for williamson's ether synthesis the choice of the starting materials is very very important let's say that you want to synthesize the butyl propyl ether which has this structure right here Okay. For this particular ether, it doesn't really matter what kind of alkyl halide you will be choosing and what would be the uh, alkoxide ion. You can start with propyl bromide or you can start with butyl bromide and then react it with corresponding alkoxide ion. So here in this case, the alkoxide would be a butoxide. Okay. And here it would be the propoxide ion. So whether you do the reaction in any one of these route, it is going to lead to the formation of a product, right? Because we know that both of these are primary alkyl halides and primary alkyl halides will undergo substitution reaction, which is going to go make a nucleophilic attack with the alkoxide ion is going to make a nucleophilic attack on this carbon and the BR is going to get trusted out leading to the formation of butyl propyl ether. And the same thing is going to happen here as well. But if you're going to synthesize tertiary butyl ethyl ether, then you have to choose the starting materials very carefully. Okay, so here is the structure for tertiary butyl ether. Let's say that if you're going to choose um, the tertiary butyl bromide as your alcohol halide. So here is the structure for tertiary butyl bromide. And you're going to react it with the corresponding alkoxide, which is your ethoxide in this case. So when you do this reaction, okay, this is not going to lead to the formation of substitution product. It is not going to lead to the formation of the um, tertiary butyl ethyl ether. Why? Because this is tertiary alcohol halide, right? And we know for sure tertiary alcohol halides do not undergo SN2 reaction. SN2 reaction is not possible with tertiary alcohol halide. And therefore, it is going to lead to the formation of elimination product and this is your elimination product so by adopting this route there is no possibility that you can get this ether but when you switch the alkyl halide and the alkoxide ion there is a possibility that you can get this ether now let's see how this is going to be let's choose ethyl bromide as a starting material and an alkoxide ion now is going to be tertiary butoxide Okay, now let's take a look into this alkyl halide. This is a primary alkyl halide and primary alkyl halide for sure it is going to undergo SN2 reaction, right? And uh, where this alkoxide ion is going to go make a nucleophilic attack on the electrophilic carbon and thrust the leaving group out, thereby forming our tertiary butyl ethyl ether. So this is the structure for a tertiary butyl ethyl ether, right? And along with it, yes, there is going to be some, pos some um, 
of the elimination product that will be formed remember this is a bulky base okay a bulky base will lead to some of the elimination product since this is a primary alkyl halide there is going to be more of the substitution product and less of the elimination product so you will be having this as a minor product whereas your substitution product is going to be the major product so on the whole when you want to synthesize an ether using Williamson's ether synthesis you have to carefully choose the starting materials the second way to synthesize ethers is through the acid catalyst dehydration of alcohols. Alcohols can undergo dehydration, which is removal of water when reacted with concentrated H2SO4 in the presence of heat. So here, uh, the first step is going to be activation of the alcohol, whereby it is converted into a good leaving group. And the second reaction, uh, the second step is the SN2 reaction. Okay, now let's do the mechanism for this reaction. The first step one molecule of alcohol is going to get protonated or one molecule of alcohol is going to get activated in the presence of H2SO4. Okay, remember this oxygen with its lone pair of electrons is going to go abstract this hydrogen thereby getting converted into a good leaving group. Okay, once it is converted into a good leaving group, a second molecule of alcohol is going to make a nucleophilic attack on this electrophilic carbon. Right, so let's draw the second molecule of alcohol. This is going to make a nucleophilic, basically an SN2 reaction on this electrophilic carbon and thrust the leaving group out. Okay, so this is going to leave, thereby forming a protonated ether, a new oxonium ion. So once the protonated ether is formed, the base or even water which has been released from this first step, from this from this step here, it's going to act as a base abstracting this hydrogen and neutralizing this positive charge, thereby giving us the ether that we want. Okay. So on the whole, this is the second method for the synthesis of ethers and that is through the dehydration of alcohols. The third way to synthesize ethers is through the acid catalyst addition of alcohols to alkenes. This is an electrophilic addition reaction wherein we are going to follow Markovnikov's rule. Right? According to Markovnikov's rule, the electrophile is going to get added to the carbon which has the most number of hydrogens across the double bond. So between these two carbons, which one has got higher number of hydrogens? Obviously, it is this one. So the hydrogen is going to get added to this carbon and the OCH3 from methanol is going to get added to this carbon. Right? So the product is going to be a tertiary butyl methyl ether.